in today's class, we will be learning a little more about polynomials. We will learn about their roots, that is the zero of the polynomials and the relationship between the roots and the various terms, the coefficients of the polynomial. So, let us just go back and see what are the terms we remember before we jump into this uh, portion. Okay, let us take a simple polynomial of the type x square plus 8x plus 15. Now, the highest power of the variable x is 2. So, this is known as a quadratic polynomial. All these things of course, we know just a small revision of course. Now, we will find the factors. Okay, let us just directly write the factors. How to find it? We will go a little later. But let us just write the factors of this polynomial. Now, what do we mean by factors of a polynomial? Just like any number, if I have a number 15, what does that mean? It means that by multiplying 3 and 5, both being the prime numbers, we get 15. So, we can get 15 as 1 into 15 or 3 into 5, but 1 into 15 we cannot call it as prime factors because they are not prime numbers. Obviously, 3 and 5 are prime numbers, so these two are called the factors of the number 15. So, that is we multiply 3 into 5 to get 15. Similarly, what are the things that can be multiplied here? What are the algebraic expressions that can be multiplied to get this particular quadratic polynomial? Now, this can be written as x square plus 5x plus 3x plus 15. This 5 and 3 make it 8. Now, let us take the first two terms and the next two terms. So, this will give me x then x plus 5, then here I get 3 and again x plus 5. Between this set and that set, x plus 5 is common, leaves me with x plus 3 here. Now, what does this mean? Exactly the same way 15 I can get by multiplying 3 and 5. This polynomial, quadratic polynomial, I can get by multiplying x plus 5 into x plus 3. These two small linear they are both linear. Can you see that? The highest power being 1. These two individual linear polynomials, when we multiply, we are going to get this. You can always check that. Of course, from here we came here. So, obviously, this has to be correct. We can, of course, check. Exactly the same way we got 15 as 3 into 5. Anytime you multiply 3 into 5, you will get 15 only. So, this is what you do in the smaller classes. 3 into 5, you learn in a very small class. Suddenly, you jump in the reverse direction. You want to find out how I got 15. So, you come to the conclusion that by multiplying 3 and 5, I got 15. Similarly, you know, multiplying these two terms is not difficult. You know very well, how do we multiply the first into first to so x square, then the first into the second one plus 3x, then this one into 5 into x, 5x, and then 5 into 3, 15. You add up these two because they are like terms. So, x square plus 8x plus 15. So, this multiplying the two factors to get this expression is not tough. The other way around, yes, we learn this factorization. That is what the entire lesson about factorization is all about. You are given a polynomial and split it into so many factors so that when you multiply all of them, you get the original polynomial. Now, we got only two factors because it is a quadratic polynomial. So, the one clue is whenever the polynomial is quadratic in nature, you will get only two factors. If it is cubic in nature, you will get three factors and so on. Of course, we will be studying only about quadratic as well as cubic. Okay. Now, after having got this x plus y and x plus 3, let me write it here. So, x square plus 8x plus 15, this can be written as x plus 5 into x plus 3. What do these two are factors? So, that term is clear now. What are factors? Factors are those algebraic expression which are when multiplied give us the original big polynomial. That is all. Okay. Now, what is the zero of the polynomial? What will make this polynomial become zero? So, we can keep on guessing. Of course, you put 1 here, see whether it is coming to zero. You can put 2, try whether it is coming. You can go for minus number, you can go for plus numbers, you can get for fractions, decimals, anything is possible. You can keep on trying this. But the easier way is you get it into fraction. So, either x plus 5 when it becomes 0. So, obviously, this entire term will become 0. 0 multiplied by anything else will become 0. That means, this whole polynomial has become 0. So, x plus 5 is equal to 0 gives me x is equal to minus 5. This is known as the root of this polynomial or 0 of the polynomial. So, both the terms are 
just used you know wherever uh, in different books it has been used in different ways so you can call x as min is equal to minus phi is one of the root or you can call it as a zero of the polynomial that means this number minus phi if i put here minus phi whole square into 8 into minus phi plus 15 try the answer becomes zero the other one is if i put x plus 3 is equal to 0 gives me x is equal to minus 3 now both minus 5 and minus 3 are known as zeros of the polynomial so we have got the zeros but i just want to know in what way these two numbers minus 5 and minus 3 are somehow related to these numbers can i just make a guess these numbers are very simple to look at but just directly by looking at it just let us uh, write it and see if I write x square plus 8x plus 15 and try to relate these two zeros, these two roots to these numbers, am I going to get some idea? This is the polynomial. How it is generally written? Any general form is ax square plus bx plus c. This is how the polynomial is written. Okay. Now, let me just add these two. Since it has got two roots, they are individually named one can be called alpha, the other is called beta, not in the same order, not necessarily in the same order, your choice, you can take this as alpha, that is beta, that is fine, okay. Now just let me add these two, alpha plus beta, what do I get? Minus 5 plus minus 3, I am getting minus 8 and somehow I am going to get something here, isn't it? Minus 8 here. Similarly, if I take alpha beta, alpha beta means alpha into beta what i am getting minus 5 into minus 3 gives me plus 15 so minus 5 into minus 3 gives me plus 15 not minus 15 plus 15 okay so minus into minus plus now this is related to this and they are also related to this term a but what is a here in the original i know b is 8 yes i directly relate that b is equal to 8 c the constant is 15 what is a here 1 so, can I write alpha plus beta is equal to, since it is minus 8, but I have only 8 here, can I write it as minus b, which turns out to be minus 8, divided by 1, which is a. So, alpha plus beta is nothing but in any polynomial, any quadratic polynomial, if I am able to write the given polynomial in this format, then the two roots, I may not know them individually, that is okay, I can always find their sum. So, alpha plus beta is going to be minus b by a. What is minus b? It is the minus of the coefficient of x, coefficient of x term. Okay. So, as a formula, it is minus b by a. Actually, it is nothing but minus of coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x square. What is x square's coefficient? Here it is 1. x square's coefficient is 1. So, I got minus of minus 8 by 8 which is minus 8 by 8 okay now alpha beta product of the two zeros i got as 15 can we relate this 15 divided by 1 so i can write that as c by a so alpha plus beta for any quadratic polynomial alpha and beta both being the zeros both being the roots both terms can be used alpha plus beta is always equal to minus of b by a. What is b? You can find out what is b. It is nothing but the coefficient of the term x with a minus sign. You have to write a minus sign here. So, even though it is plus 8, I will write here as minus 8 and that is what I got here. So, what is the answer I am going to get here? Minus 8 by 1 which is minus 8 which is what we got even by finding the roots. Now, alpha into beta that is product of the two zeros is nothing but c by a. What is C here? 15 by A, which is again 15 by 1 is equal to 15. So, here I got alpha beta is equal to 15. If I multiply these two, I am going to get 15 only. What is alpha plus B? This can be written as minus of, what is B here? 8, 8 by 1, which is minus 8. What did I get here? When I added them, alpha plus beta is minus 8. How I got minus 8? I added these two. I really found the zeros, added them and tried to verify. But suppose if I am not interested in finding the zeros, all I need is some relationship between the roots, I can directly go for these two formula. Alpha plus beta is minus 8 or minus b by a for any quadratic polynomial. Alpha beta is equal to c by a 
where what is B, we must know what is A, what is C. B is the coefficient of x term, C is the constant and A is the coefficient of x square. So, there will be only three terms. It can be less than three terms, it cannot be more than three terms. So, suppose you have a polynomial of the type say x square minus 4. Now, where is B? It is not there, but we can take B as 0. So, I can write A is equal to 2, B is equal to 0, C is equal to minus 4. And then the roots are related like this. Alpha plus beta is equal to minus B by A. Since the B is 0, that means the sum of the root is 0. Obviously, the root are opposite of each other. Okay. So, one will be positive and one will be negative. Then only the roots are you know, when you add up, it becomes 0. And why it is becoming 0? Because b is 0. Why b is 0? There is no x term. So, b is 0, c is minus 4. So, the product of the root, minus 4 by 2. Sum of the roots, 0 by 2, which is turning out to be 0. So, from that, we can always find alpha and beta separately. That is a different issue. Either you do it by factorization or you learn more properties of alpha and beta, which are the roots and try to find out how they are related using these expressions and then of course we can from this we can even get if I am just given this value of alpha plus beta is minus 8 and alpha beta is 15 in fact I can go back and form this equation. So both ways it works either from the given uh, expression polynomial I can find the roots their relationship or the other way around if I know the relationship I can literally write down the original polynomial. So we will do some problems and we will understand how these alpha beta relationships can be used.